Good day everyone! Welcome back to General Mathematics. I am Engineer Adrian Miguel S. Omengan, and I am the third placer in the recently concluded Electronics Engineer and Electronics Technician Licensure Examination. I also graduated as Magna Cum Laude from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila. Now that we are done with the introduction to functions and rational functions, we will now proceed to inverse functions. Welcome to inverse function, LBVG mat 1-3.1. For this section, the most essential learning competency is represents real-life situations using one-to-one -one functions. The topic under this, one-to-one -one function. In line with the most essential learning competency, the following are our learning objectives. So by the end of this video, we want to know what is a one-to-one -one function and its real-life applications, and we want to determine whether a function is one-to-one -one by algebra manipulation and by horizontal line test. So first, what is a one-to-one -one function? A function is called one-to-one -one function if no elements of A have the same image in elements of B. For example, we have here two sets, namely set A and set B. Set A contains the elements 1, 8, 7, and 5. And set B contains the elements 9, 4, 2, and 3. If this correspondence happen, let's say, 1 corresponds to 9, 8 corresponds to 2, 7 corresponds to 4, and 5 corresponds to 3, then we can say that this relation is a one-to-one -one function. By the way, when we say image, in this example, 9 is the image of 1. Alright? Because we notice here that each unique element in B corresponds to 1, and only one element in A, then we can say that this relation is a one-to-one -one function. We can still say that this relation is still a one-to-one -one function even if we have an excess value without pair in set B. In this example, the element 6. However, if we have the sets A and B, with A having the elements 1, 8, 7, and 5, and B with elements 9, 4, and 2. With this correspondence, where 1 corresponds to 9, 7 corresponds to 4, but both 8 and 5 corresponds to the same value in B, which is 2, then we can see that this is not a one-to-one -one function. We can only consider a function to be one-to-one -one if an element in set B corresponds to only one value in set A. Here are some real-life examples. Let's say in a school, we interviewed three students, and each of these students has their own learner's number. This learner's number is unique to them and cannot be assigned to another student. Therefore, there is a unique learner's number assigned to every student, and since it cannot be given to another, then we can consider that this relation to be one-to-one -one function. Next, the three major airports here in the Philippines are as follows. First is the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. We also have the Mactan Cebu International Airport. And we also have Francisco Bangoy International Airport. Each airport are assigned their unique three-letter airport code or location code by the International Air Transport Association. For the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, the three-letter airport code is MNL, for Mactan Cebu International Airport, CEB, and since the Francisco Bangay International Airport is located in Davao, DVO. The airport code assigned to each airport are unique only to them so as to avoid confusion with other locations. 
each airport has a unique three-letter airport code, then the relation is a function. Each unique airport code is assigned to only one airport, then we can consider this to be a one-to-one -one function as well. How do we determine if a given function is one-to-one? -one? There are two ways. First, is algebra manipulation. Algebra manipulation, if you substitute both positive and negative of a number to function and gives a unique answer, then it is one-to-one. -one. For example, we have your y equals f of x equals 2x plus 2. Let's assume value of x where x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Take note that we can use any value of x as long as we take its positive and negative value. So let's substitute. For x equals 2, we have y equals 2 times 2 plus 2 and that is equal to 6. For x equals negative 2, we have y equals 2 times negative 2 plus 2 we have y equals negative 2. Since for different values of x, it yields different values of y or unique values of y, then we can say that the function f of x equals 2x plus 2 is a 1 to 1 function. For our second example, we have here y equals f of x equals x squared plus 4. So again, let's assume values of x where x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Again, we can use any value for x as long as we take its positive and negative value. Now, let's substitute. For x equals 2, we have y equals 2 squared plus 4. And that is y equals 4 plus 4. And that gives us y equals 8. Now let's go for x equals negative 2. For x equals negative 2, we have y equals negative 2 squared plus 4. And that is y equals 4 plus 4. And that is still 8. Since for different values of x, here we have x equals 2 and x equals negative 2, it yields the same value of y, which is y equals 8, y equals 8. Therefore, we can say that the function f of x equals x squared plus 4 is not a 1 to 1 function. Now let's answer some problems. For problem number 1, is the given equation an example of 1 to 1 function? f of x equals 2x squared plus 3. When we are given a function, the better option to determine whether a function is one-to-one -one is through algebraic manipulation. So let's assume x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Let's take note that we can use any value for x such that we get its positive value and its corresponding negative value. Now, let's substitute. For x equals 2, we have f of 2 equals 2 times 2 squared plus 3. And that gives us 11. For x equals negative 2, we have f of negative 2 equals 2 times negative 2 squared plus 3. And still, it's 11. We can observe here that for x equals 2, it gives 11. And for x equals negative 2, Still, it gives 11. Since both values of x produce the same value, therefore the function is not 1 to 1. Now let's go to problem number 2. Is the given equation an example of 1 to 1 function? f of x equals x plus 2. Again, when we are given a function, the better option to determine whether a function is 1 to 1 is through algebraic manipulation. Let's assume x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. 
let's take note that we can use any value for x. In our previous problems, we used x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. But to prove our point that we can use any value for x, let's use x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. Now let's substitute. For x equals 3, we have f of 3 equals 3 plus 2, and that is 5. However, for x equals negative 3, we have f of negative 3 equals negative 3 plus 2, and that gives us negative 1. We can observe here that for different values of x, we have different values of y. Since the resulting values are not the same, therefore we can say that the function is 1 to 1. Next method is horizontal line test. Horizontal line test is a test used to determine if a function is 1 to 1. If a horizontal line intersects a function's graph more than once, then the function is not 1 to 1. For this example, we have here y as a function of x equals to x plus 2, and it is in the form y equals mx plus b. This form is also known as the slope-intercept form, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. In the given function, m equals 2 and b equals 2 as well. Let's recall that the slope is also known as the rise over run. In the function, slope is 2 or 2 over 1 in fraction form. 2 will be the rise and 1 will be the run. The y-intercept is the value of y where the line crosses the y-axis. When we are plotting a line in this form, we plot first the y-intercept. At the y-axis, find 2. So, here is that point. And then we use the slope. We rise 2 units upward and 1 unit to the right, since both values are positive. And here is the line y equals 2x plus 2. Then we will now test this graph using this horizontal line, moving it along the y-axis. Since at any given time, the horizontal line intersects the line y equals 2x plus 2 only once, therefore we can say that the function 2x plus 2 is a 1 to 1 function. For our next example, we have here y as a function of x equals x squared plus 4. In plotting this function that we know as quadratic equation, we need at least 3 points. So let's assume at least 3 values of x. In this case, we have x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals negative 1. And then we find their corresponding y values by substituting them to the function. So for x equals 0, we have y equals 0 squared plus 4, we have y equals 4, giving us a point 0, 4. Plotting this point, that is here. Next, we have x equals 1. Substituting it to the function, we have y equals 1 squared plus 4, giving us a value of 5. 1, 5. Plotting it, that is this point. Next, we have y equals negative 1 squared plus 4. We still have the value 5. So we have negative 1, 5. And that is this point. Now that we have these three points, we connect them. Now, we will test this graph using this horizontal line moving along the y-axis. At this specific point, the horizontal line passes through or intersects the graph at exactly two points. Therefore, f of x equals x squared plus 4 is not a one-to-one -one function. So again, 
a function cannot be considered to be one-to-one -one if the horizontal line intersects the graph at more than one point. Let's answer some problems. For problem number three, is the given equation an example of one-to-one -one function? When we are given a graph of a function, the better option to determine whether a function is one-to-one -one is through horizontal line test. Here is our horizontal line, and we will move it along the y-axis. If we followed closely the horizontal line, there are certain points where it intersects the graph at only one point, and that is up to this point. However, our criteria is at any value of y, if the horizontal line passes through more than one point on our graph, then it is not a one-to-one -one function. We can see that at this point, the horizontal line passes through the graph at more than one point, and that is from this point upwards, then we cannot consider this function as one-to-one -one function anymore. Since at a certain value of y, the horizontal line intersects the graph at two points, or it has two values of x, then the function is not one-to-one. -one. For problem number four, is the given equation an example of one-to-one -one function? So again, since we are given a graph of a function, the better option is to use the horizontal line test. So here is the horizontal line, then we will move it along the y-axis. Since at any value of y, the line intersects the graph at only one point, or there is only one value of y for any value of x, then the function is one to one. And that's the end of our lecture. What we learned in this video, we defined one to one function and give real life applications. And we also learned the two methods in determining if a function is one to one by algebra manipulation and by horizontal line test. In our next video, we will learn the inverse of a one-to-one -one function and its representation. For supplementary problems, you may refer to QuexBook General Mathematics Chapter 3.